Look till it starts streaming. There we go. And if you got him, y'all. What's going on? It's me, Craig X. Hang on. Oh, yeah. Well, I already got one lit. So you take this for a second. And while I'm going to do them, light them if you got them. What's going on? I appreciate everybody for token up and tuning in. Me, Craig X, episode 119. I'm just over here on Facebook right now. I have to excuse me for one second. Andrew, you want to show what I'm doing? Uh, and Tim McBride. So what happened was is we forgot to just update the <coughs> little uh, info with what's on Facebook. And it had last week's show info. So here we go. We can save that. Boom. Got that updated. Okay. So now we'll go ahead and refresh that. So at least the Facebook title is, is correct now in theory with the stream. So we get the right info. Look at that picture in picture in picture in picture. Oh my God. I'm getting dizzy just watching it. Um, close. I almost got it right. It's episode 119 of the award winning. <coughs> the award winning Expert Joints Live. And this is actually an episode we're calling the everlasting episode, though I expect probably 90 minutes, actually. Um, <laughs> we're just calling it that because of my guests today. Um, but speaking of my guests, we appreciate the guests who were here last week. We had Mike from Smoker's Guide. We had Mark from Smoking Pure Hemp, Roll Your Own in the place to be. We had Hope and Mama Rugal came through. Mm. Fat Farmer. We had Fat Farmer Skype in and supply us with some products to sample on, as well as, oh, Lone Tree Concentrates hooked us up with a bunch of products to auction off. So uh, money has been received. It will be deposited soon, and the um, products will be on their way. Thank you all for supporting that. It was a great show. Make sure you watch the replay. After this, as far as that, man, I appreciate everybody who's here in the chat room. What's going on? Anthro grows two joints. Detonator, Tish Mac, four twenty, Wild Dragon, <laughs> Tie Me Up, uh, uh, Also Wanderer. Who's in there? Lyle Ketchum, Joe Darrett, NorCal Nugget. What's happening, everybody? Appreciate you being there. Kevin Orslack, hi. What's happening, everybody? Appreciate all those who come through week after week after week over there on Facebook too. Marissa, Rob, Trevor, Milena. How y'all doing over there? Good to see you guys. We're here at Studio 710, looking fancy and new. Mm -hmm. You should see the little spinny graphic we've got somewhere. I don't know if Andrew can put that in yet, but we'll get that on next week. But it looks cool. It's totally turning heads over here. <laughs> uh, speaking of heads over here, on the show this week, my man Joel from Everlasting Extracts. He's going to be in the place to be to hang out and smoke it up. As well as our bud Tim McBride. Doesn't really stop by, but Skypes by <laughs> with another one of Tim's tales and a whole bunch more. And speaking of Everlasting Extracts, I gotta introduce my guest because not only is my man Joel here to chat, he also brought us the five products that are sitting on my desk. And although I'm smoking one, I better get to rolling another one because, you know, <laughs> that's how we roll around here. Uh, from the award-winning Everlasting Extracts, please welcome to the show, my man Joel. What's going on, boss? Hey, how's it going? Good, brother. You? Good. Uh, it's awesome to be out on the show, finally. Looking great down here at the studio. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, you can. You've seen Studio 710 a couple of times along the way because I think Jade Maple handles your packaging, and, and I believe they've got an office down the hall. So you've been here, and you've seen us build out the, yeah. the products or the studio along the way, and it's kind of the evolution. Right? Yeah, the progression around here is great. Uh, it's awesome, though, to finally get a, a chance to sit in with you and smoke. Well, thanks, man. I appreciate you bringing <coughs> some products and coming up to hang out, but this is the part where we go like, the, okay, so what did you bring me? I mean, <laughs> now you're technically like an extract company, but extracts come from flowers, and even though they're not really your thing, you know I roll joints on the show. Yeah, so we, we definitely to... brought you a couple things to, to try nice. out, and, and flowers, too. So uh, we got, what's in this? We got a jar of uh, Pink Rockstar Bud. Mm, um, Rockstar. We got the live resin to match. Well, we got a Pink Rockstar Cookies, yep. live resin. Mm -hmm. Bam. And then in the little package here, I brought you some of the Orange Barbara from House of the Great Gardener. Oh, shout out to Buds there. from that. Yep. And then we have some crazy live resin that we did from that. And, and then over like here, 
I saw a couple shatters or something too, aren't there? Yeah, we got some uh, skunk shatter and a VCDC, which is Viper City Cross ACDC. Mm -hmm. It's a high, C high CBD. Nice, nice, yeah. nice. You got a couple things on the table. We're gonna be smoking good this week. Also, you, we've, uh, if you'll notice, we've got Al the Alchemist's Corey glass piece oh, over yeah, on, the, uh, on the table, hooked up into the sublimator with the special sublimator adapter. Looking real, real nice. Shouts to Alchemito for letting us rock the glass piece this week. I figured it'd be easy because A, Joel pretty much knows how to treat a heady. He's got <laughs> a few of them himself. Yeah, and there's not a thousand nice. people around here to potentially, you know, go fucking anything up. So um, yeah, we got that going on. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and start rolling up some of the pink rock star. Uh, throw that in the bud cam because it was closest. I want to try that orange barb too. I hear great things about it, but let's start with the pink. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in the bud cam here. Right let's here. see what this looks like. Boom, blurry. That's what it looks like. It's fucking blurry. <laughs> there we go. Let's see what we can do about that. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Very, very nice. Let's see if we can look past through in there. Oh, look at that whole background in there. It's snowing back there. It's a blizzard. It's <laughs> a blizzard going on in the background there. Super nice. So the, 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 the pink rock star. Mm, very nice. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and smoke that for a second. Oh, I'll leave that there in case you want to come back, roll up a couple little nugs of this here, and move on with the show. Where did my script go? It's around here somewhere. Yes, I have a script because, honestly, it's for Andrew's purposes. I can basically improv these shows for the most part. But when it comes down to it, we got a lot of graphics and shit to fly. So Andrew needs some cues along the way. I mean, he's getting pretty intuitive, but... Yeah. Isn't the, that right, big guy? The, uh, the pink rocks are... Is super nice. super gassy, right? I'm gonna do a dab of this right here, actually, right now. Yeah, man. Well, you start dabbing that up. I got I'm gonna roll some of this shit up over here and get on with it. So, as you come back from the dab, I will uh, say first of all, if you want more products from Everlasting Extracts, one of the best places you can check them out is on Instagram, which is at Everlasting X. <coughs> but the second E is actually a three, so it's like EV3 Everlasting X. <coughs> But you get it. Just start typing it and it will come up. Uh, that is the one to go check out there. Oh, hey, look at you. Hey, there we go. Hey, look at you. And that's some, what, some live resin next to you or some sugar <coughs> axe or what is that? We got the pink rock star. We got the pink rock star flower exactly where right. you're showing. Hey, hey, look at him. We're him on at cue. the studio. Boom, boom, boom. Right on cue. <laughs> Almost like we planned it that way. Uh, all right. Appreciate you guys all being here. What's going on? So you go check them out. There's also a Facebook page that you guys have too. We'll talk about that in a little minute. Oh, there it is right there. Yeah. It's a Facebook group, really, but get in on that. Yeah, check it out. Uh, you know, join, hit join. I'll, I'll accept uh, new members as they come for sure. My man, doing it. One, everybody's welcome. Uh, anyway, <laughs> let me get into this. So we're seeing these this products. We got it here. I'm going to roll this up. We've seen the, the web sites, if you will. Um, tell us a story, uh, Everlasting Extracts. Uh, how did you guys come about? Uh, well, you know, we were we were always into cannabis. Um, I really started getting into the medical part of cannabis when uh, my grandma got sick. Mm -hmm. um, and then extracts, uh, it kind of grew, like the knowledge that I learned through that came over to extracts. And then we moved out to BC and started the uh, company about two and a half years ago now. And uh, from there, it's just got crazy the strain selection the new methods of extraction everything uh, the whole industry is just really blown up out here and it's been awesome to be a part of it that's for sure man i love it i'm glad you guys have made, made your way out there because you do a really really good job and i mean not only yeah awards and stuff we'll talk about but um you have a wide variety of extracts and you want to give us a rundown on like the, the brand or the varieties you specialize specialize in i guess yeah, so uh, we do lots of things. We do shatters, live resins, waxes, uh, you know. Um, pretty much my, my favorite is definitely all the live resin extraction. I like to, to get it in the extractor as soon as possible. Uh, maximum turp retention. I uh, keep coming up with like crazy products like this orange barb. Uh, I can't wait till you get into some of that. Well, for we're sure. going to get on that next, <laughs> man. I want to save it. I can't, I can't, was, yeah, mm, no, no, save the best for last. <laughs> uh, right? Um, I mean, there's so many different varieties and variations of different extracts as there are right now in the market. You get in there, I mean, at one point we had just various oils, and then we had the sort of taffy stuff, and then it was, oh, you get butter or shatter, and, and then oh, live resin, and then there's rosins, and then you've got the HTFSC, XF, LMNOPDQ, 
you know, um, I, I, it's cool. Uh, but a lot of their end results, are they not kind of determined by... By the strains. The, the strain plant profile as well as, I guess, the method you use to make And that's one of the things but. that always, like, drew me to the whole extraction process is with extracts, you can blend and combine so many different flower strains um, while you're doing the extraction. It's almost like bypass, bypassing cross, cross breeding, you know what I mean? Because that we all know, like that would take like a lot of time to to crossbreed two strains together and produce an end product. Right. Where with the extractions, it's a lot easier. Where you could take a pound of say blueberry and a plant, a pound of uh, pink Kush, put them in the extractor, and, has and come blueberry. with yeah, and have some pink blueberry exactly. Right, right, right. Um, so the possibilities are really endless, and that's where you're going to notice a lot of different consistencies. Your high CBDs will have like you know a high like kind of like a sappy consistency, right. um, where um, a lot of indicas in that too, you'll notice too, have like a high crystal, like high cannabinoid finish to it. Right. Yeah, because I notice even when like you're pressing rosin with, with Daverman or or I see different products from different people and sometimes it'll start out as one and you know, shit sometimes it will butter on its own or changes you have it, go sugary like. Oh yeah, it, different it, temps and everything. Yeah, right? It seems even the way that you store it to some degree can have effects on, on how your products uh, uh, turn out, if you will. Um, and it's crazy to me to see, like, people will run, we got the same gear, we run it the same way, and this batch of something gives me this result, and this batch gives me this result. I, I guess you can sort of skew it to some degree, or if you use ethanol versus, versus propane versus butane versus water extraction, ice water extraction. Yeah, exactly. You're, like, you're going to get a different product slightly at the end, but my question comes to you then is, uh, you don't have to give, any, give away any recipes per se, but just so people know what your products are made of, I mean, how do you make your products? Uh, while we're doing uh, closed loop uh, butane extraction, well, uh, it's actually a blended solvent, 70% entane, 30% propane. Um, pretty much just running the freshest material we can, whether it's live resin, shatter, or wax, any of those extractions, uh, pretty much the goal is to, to run the freshest material. Your favorite kind of extracts to uh, make? Live resin, hands down. Right? Yeah. Because the process, I guess, you chop that fucker down, run over and feed it through the machine practically. I mean, not yeah, quite as simple as that. But. It's right off the plant. Like, a lot, of, a lot of our stuff is instantly prepped. We're talking, like, hours. Hours of being off the plant, and we're getting it prepped ready for extraction. So do you notice the difference, obviously, in, in I would assume, Okay, I would imagine you notice the difference in like your terpene profiles. I could see that potentially you notice a difference in yields, um, and even maybe the different consistency of products working with a live plant or a freshly picked plant versus something that's been dried and cured and been sitting around oh, for yeah. who knows how long. Oh yeah, no, uh, totally. And and even even with your t the first thing you were talking about was the terpene profile. Even a matter of it drying over 24 hours. You know, it could be drying off the plant for 24 hours, and and I'm gonna probably notice notice a, a difference. Notice a difference in the in the finished turp profile on it. But uh, yeah, cured to live is is completely different uh, product. Yeah, because everybody dries and cures their weed different. That yeah. Again, I I, that's challenging. Is picking if you're outsourcing. We outsource a lot of our our flowers. We have in-house grows and and source a lot of it. But um, picking the, the proper weed is is. Uh, it's crucial, crucial, crucial to the whole process. And uh, if you uh, if you're not picking the right stuff, you're, you're probably not going to end have the end uh, results that you're looking for. That's for sure. To, to paraphrase a few people, fire in, fire out, right? So, yeah, exactly. Um, your favorite type to consume then? Oh, cushes. Any of the pink cushes, OG cushes, mm -hmm. Bubba cushes. Uh, live resin versus shatter versus butter versus live resin. Li li yeah. Live resin, still that you prefer that the most? Yeah, still a good live resin. What about like all these new high terpene extractions and the full spectrum extract? This, all the the, the new vowel extracts, if you will. What do you think um, about them? Well, we've been playing around with a few few different techs right now. We see a lot of these guys growing like. Diamonds, I guess, is, is you would say is the new phrase, and yeah. uh, that's something we're going to be looking to get into a little more. We have a few finish 
uh, products that have come out real granular like that. And we've noticed, again, uh, strain dependent mm, um, along with process and tech for sure. Well, I mean, looking at even uh, rosin, if you will, the amount of pressure for the amount of time and the amount of heat, as, as, from, as I understand it, I haven't studied it as hard, yeah. but uh, as little as, you know, a, a, a few pounds and a few seconds and a few degrees can all dramatically change the, the difference of the outcome which you're going to get. So. <coughs> and that's the same thing with butane extraction too, like the slightest change in temperatures or how you prep your weed opposed to, you know, the humidity levels uh, to when it went into the system, any, anything like that, right? I, I'm curious, when it comes down to it, I mean, how did you or where did you start making extracts? Or where, like, how did you get into it in the first place? Uh, Man, I was, oh, you know, when I was younger, I always made honey oil. Uh, mm -hmm. I always had access to a lot of little, little small outdoor buds from like all the, all the trims and stuff we went little to. Popcorn and little shrapnels and shit. Yeah, yeah. so, and they weren't like the best of smoke, so I always made. But it wasn't, I, it wasn't leaf. No, so, so I learned how to make honey oil out of them, right? And, uh, I wasn't, I wasn't big into, I, I wasn't a big dabber at first, but we were always smoking like honey oil slicks and such. Mm -hmm. And the first time uh, somebody gave me a, a dab break, I, we, were, we were dabbing honey oil off of it. And I was like, I'm totally amazed. And then I seen Shatter for the first time I ever seen it. Uh, I was probably like 17 or 18. And I seen it, um, in a sheet and it was like gold you know a big slab of gold and I never seen it that like that before and pretty much after that I was like pretty much set on making <coughs> the nicest looking gold slabs that I could after that. That was it mm -hmm. man. Um, and well now you got all kinds of available. Yeah. <laughs> right there you go and you're winning trophies for it and, and people want uh, people want your products so my question next one is, is then uh, what are your more popular products <coughs> Do people live resin or shatters or butters? What do you sell the most of? Oh, right now, right now, a combination of the shatters and, and live resin are both both really hot. I guess it would come down to some. We have some really popular strains, uh, Blue Dream, mm -hmm. Shatter, and and live resin, very popular. Uh, Nukin, um, our Pink Kush. This Pink Rock Star is a new yeah, man, cut, which is delicious. Here, I'll trade you back for yeah, whatever here. this was. Oh, uh, geez, what else? We got uh, 51st OG coming out. That's, that's going to be a real nice cut that we have. Um, we did some just some slabs of that recently. They went out. Uh, MMJ Canada, you'd be able to find the, uh, probably some of that product there. Just MMJ? Yeah. Um, what else? Um, oh, well, okay. Uh, here's my next question. How do you get your products to taste so good? Again, that is sourcing the freshest material. Right. Yeah, definitely sourcing the freshest material possible because um, the pre and the prep, a lot of the prep on how you prep your weed before you put it into the extractor, mm -hmm. that's a big, uh, that's a big uh, decision maker on the outcome, I guess you'd say, because you can over dry your weed, right? If you put in a big, huge, uh, dry thing of hay, it's not going to come out tasting very nice. That's no, for sure. if you sit there and fucking like... <laughs> half bake off your weed and try and just super dry it out or whatever, you're going to evaporate a bunch of things. Or if you leave it out for too long, yeah, exactly. with, with too long of fans and winds blowing it, you're going to eventually start to push some off as well too. It's, yeah, your slightest little bit of technique, but I guess if you're plucking it, prepping it, and putting it right in, there's not a whole lot of time for, for drying and all that. Yeah, and we, we pretty much have a pretty good process um, down now where that I find that works, especially for the live. The live where... We're getting you guys that. kill it on that, man. We're getting that like within, like I said, hours off the plant. So hours this, off the plant, those this, lives are done. This pink cook, uh, this uh, uh, this pink rock star. Yeah. This is a. Oh, mm. that's a pink rock star and cookies. Oh Girl shit. Girl Scout cookies mixed. Oh shit. It's not dab time yet, but I have. We are smoking on some of that, so I may as well give one of these a rip in the fucking stuff later. Mm -hmm. Prepare for coughing fit to ensue. A little bit of this. Hey, you know what? I'm gonna put it in the dab cam. It's cool, I have multiple cameras. Let me see, click back to the click, back to the click, back to the click. Let me see. Oh my goodness. Look at how lovely that looks. Oh, very nice. Oh, very nice. Oh, look at that. So pretty. So pretty. Mm, 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 mm. <coughs> looks delicious. We mm -hmm. get in on some of that, I tell you what. 
Yeah, that's what I was doing a dab right? earlier. I'll get in on one to you. Not dab time yet, but fuck it. We're still taking a dab break. We're taking we need some audio. Definitely need some audio for this going forward. Did you get that Muzak thing worked out, Andrew? I probably can't hear you, but... Todd is working on it for me. That's always the answer. Todd, get to work, damn it. You're probably watching over there, too, laughing with your feet up on the table. Oh, man. Oh, so tasty. <coughs> Smokey in here. <coughs> Smokey in here. <coughs> the way we had the lighting <coughs> for the first, <coughs> I don't know, whatever it was, 10, 12 episodes of, uh, of season three, you couldn't see as much of the smoke in here. <coughs> but <coughs> now, now, it's now <laughs> the way that it's lit. <laughs> and it is <coughs> in here. You see the smoke on camera a little bit more. Um, and actually in here as well, too. So, <coughs> hey, I warned you about the coffee. <coughs> Man, that shit is fucking tasty. So, preserving terps, in your case, some people are <coughs> adding terps to it, period, or taking them out and then reintroducing them back in. It seems to these days be pretty much the big talk is all about the terps. Yeah, and that's, again, <coughs> um, the the a lot of guys are doing the forcing the separation pre pre purge they're forcing separation separating it purging it and putting it <coughs> back together right. um in a finished product and um kind of like that joint started it put it back down yeah you pick it back up finish it go oh on. yeah you go later i sure do um yeah so there's there's again there's so many <coughs> different uh techniques and and processes now going uh, it, ever evolving Mm-hmm. <coughs> and it's crazy, uh, even the equipment coming out, you know? Guys were started doing this in, in like, <coughs> mason jars, this HGFSE. Then I seen them in stainless steel vessels. Now I see, like, pressure, you know, pressure-rated glass ones. Um, I just seen that from Summit Research. <coughs> they were releasing those. Uh, so I'll be definitely watching to see what's going on because you, you can never keep up with the new equipment coming <coughs> out, right? Dude, I see Alex Newcomb over in the Facebook chat. What's going on, brother? Oh, Alex, Always watching. What up, what's Alex? going on, Nuke? Uh, <coughs> uh, yeah, it is true. Like, love them or hate them, I don't have a problem <coughs> with events like the can, like the like the Lift Expo. Although I have a problem with the Lift Expo, if that makes sense. A cannabis business conference, trade show, industry support, fucking show where people go in and get extraction machines and insurance and packaging and all that sort of stuff. Totally think those are important. But I think at those, there should also be a certain level of cannabis that is allowed to be displayed, not necessarily sold, but displayed or used your machines or certain levels of your production equipment More in use on. with it or some of the jarring. or actually, Definitely think that there's some level of it that should be at least still displayed to some degree. But when you call it a fun-filled a, a fun family event <laughs> for everybody, cannabis open, cannabis is cool, just not here. That's not really a, a cannabis expo. It's a cannabis business expo, which is fine. And there's a great place for it, and that is kind of why I respect them. Those other ones like <coughs> it, like the NCIA down in, 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 uh, uh, in the States and shit like that as well, too, ICBC. These ones that actually also show the gear that you need, and that's how you stay up on top of the latest purging equipment, the latest, the latest ref refinement equipment, the latest fucking packaging equipment, all the stuff that goes with it, man. I mean, those ovens have come a long way. Oh, yeah. Right? <laughs> the... From from how we used to, I in remember 99. when it was just a pot, a pot, and a Pyrex lid on top, or a plexiglass lid with gauges. Dude, we used we used to have black PVC tubing. We'd pack full of weed with coffee filter on the bottom, blow cans of butane into a, a tin, a metal bowl, <laughs> and then burn the shit off with a fucking hair dryer until it kind of stopped, mostly stopped bubbling. What's well, funny and it because was a taffy. I started and now. Here we are. I didn't even start extractions with butane. I started it with like the ISO and ethanol yeah. wash yeah. honey oils. So before that, we did ISO oils, we would do green oils. We basically did Rick Simpson oil, if you will, um, except we didn't decarboxylate it before that. I didn't, we didn't know about that, but I was doing that five, 10 years almost before, before we were doing the Laffy Taffy and shit. But now you see these people with giant fucking ref re, uh, refining equipment, all these big, huge silver machines, all stainless steel and tubes and hoses Did, and shit. It's crazy, man. They had a twenty-five thousand dollar rosin press at at Lyft that had six, six plates, three plates interchanging at each press, 
And I thought that thing was pretty crazy. And they said it was one of the first commercial ones to ever hit an expo. And I that was the biggest yeah, right. rosin press I've, I've ever seen. <coughs> yeah, but I saw that. That was pretty big. I actually lots might of, follow, I might follow up with them being on the show. Lots of butane extraction, Tons. too. Evolved was there, Ladab. Uh, some people hate some on Some CO2 equipments. I never, I never really looked too much at those, but quite a bit of CO2. Yeah. I think it's to each their own. Some people hate on butane. They don't think it's clean enough and it leaves things behind. Some people are all about propanes, but I don't know if it changes. I think it changes the taste. <coughs> Ethanol seems like an okay way to go. CO2 it comes out a little s s not quite right. Not right, exactly. I, but I don't know. Even Nothing's with perfect. The butane, but if they look into it, you know, a properly distilled, a properly purged <coughs> butane extraction, there should be no levels of, of solvent in there left. Right that are gonna cause any harm to anybody. So I just don't understand how, how they see this problem. Now I understand along the way there'd be people doing things not right, and that could cause an issue. Right. But that's with anything. Well, and that's what my that's next point anything. is. I mean, <clears throat> it's cool if it's tasty, but it's also gotta be clean. Yeah. Like you gotta have fucking good, you gotta have good products. You gotta have like, you know, residuals because obviously the products that you use putting in gonna trickle down even worse for their column concentrates, yo. Like, what do you think's gonna happen to the impurities, right? So you pick off a lot of that as well, too. I'm sure there's certain <coughs> ways and certain processes where you can refine out bits and pieces of them depending on the end product you're making, but uh, I love the idea and principle of rosin. I'm still not 100% sold on the, on the parchment or replacements for it. I'd like to see a couple different designs come into that, but we're almost interference-free, solvent completely, like yeah. no, no, nothing. But yeah, rosin's got its, it has its own things that could be contaminants that could be in it too, right? Hundred oh, percent, man. Yeah. So it's you got all, anything could be contaminated, and when it's important that you get clean products, man. And so I mean, ask. I don't want to put in spot. But like, do you get your products tested along the way, or have you had any of your products uh, tested? Or yeah, we have our we've had our method tested quite a few different times uh, using the MB Labs. We've had a fight of test labs. Um, I believe Northern, there's an, um, one in Vancouver that did it for the Karma Cup, I believe. Mm, mm, mm. Um, we the Northern, Northern, sorry, I can't remember the name exactly. I think also you entered High Times or there was some stuff in yeah. there. Oh, yeah, oh yeah, and the High Times is the same one that did, the same company that did Karma Cup is High Times, mm, sorry. Mm. Um, but pretty much, yeah, whenever we enter in all these cups a few times a year, the, the methods have been tested, so, so we go. usually, we're pretty confident with with our extraction process for sure. Well, man, you people who know, like, there's a lot of heads out here in Vancouver who know smoking good weed, and a lot of them like smoking your your shit. So, yeah, you know, we've been we've been really lucky to uh, keep a consistent and quality product out there, and and. Uh, have a good reputation in the in the heady community, I guess you'd say out here for sure. Well, there's and the whole cannabis community has really showed us a lot of love, and uh, I appreciate that for sure. Well, man, shit, you won a Karma Cup in 2017. Yeah, we got a Karma Cup. I we, believe I accepted that on your behalf for you. Or, no, you were there. there. You were no, there. No, I was there at that time. Right, yeah, I was there. Were. Second, I got a second place Karma Cup awesome. for live resin. Um, you know, we got some cups at the Great Canadian Glass Gathering. A couple third places there. Um, the Grassroots, we did really well last year. First place, Shatter and Live Resin, two of them. Yep. Um, yep. Yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're loving entering all the competitions. Uh, lots of competitors, lots of companies out there now, so this year should be pretty interesting for sure. You back at Karma Cup 2018? Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, I, I see Joe from the squad in, uh, in the chat room and Facebook. What's going on, Joe? Uh, you know, squad always does well at Karma Cup, too. Uh, great to have you guys there, and of course, I assume 420 is coming up. Though you're going to be here back there again. Yeah, for sure. The 420 uh, celebration of Vancouver is off the, off the wall, man. I'll I'll definitely be back. We'll have our tent set up. You guys will uh, make sure to come down and check us out for sure. Uh, any other events you're planning on going on or going to in 2018? March, uh, we're going to be checking out Spanibus mm -hmm. in Barcelona. That's going to be real crazy. That's cool. Uh, we'll be entering there in the Champions Cup. Oh, um, not confirmed yet, but I'm pretty sure we were entering the Monsters Cup in Barcelona too at the same time. Hmm. Um, the gray area, that's looking like a that pretty, Edmonton pretty event, interesting maybe. event. Yeah, Edmonton. I, think I heard we're gonna try and make good it results there. from it last year. That's cool. Hard to say. Edmonton's, Edmonton, well, Alberta's a little weird. Cannabis Edmonton Day, there'll be Cannabis Day here. 
Oh yeah, for sure. What's going on for that? Like I'm not exactly sure. Well, yet, there'll be cannabis day down at. Uh, as far as I understand from the meetings we had yesterday, we didn't really talk about it, but it sounds like it will be back down at the same park that we were last year down by uh, Maiden Terminal. So that'll be a, a good event. So you should come on down and check that out. That'll <coughs> be fun. Um, uh, my other question then is, well, if, uh, if people, I mean, people have seen that big brown and yellow tent at the events, uh, <laughs> they know they're going to get some high quality extracts. But for those who, who want your products and can't wait till an event or can't get to an event, I mean, how do they get products from Everlasting Extracts? If you want to hit up a dispensary, MMJ Canada for sure. Uh, make sure to check out one of their locations. Uh, that would be the most common place for dispensary. And, and if not, you can hit us up on our Instagram or our, join our Facebook group and try to get a hold of us through it. Get a hold of us there. Perfect. Get some suggestions through that place on some locations that might have it. Yeah. Uh, and of course, 2018 going to be a big year pending so called legalization just around the corner. Uh, I would imagine a number of people are asking your thoughts about or plans about going forward in this year. Uh, yeah, it's going to be pretty interesting to see. You know, you're going to see a lot of, hopefully, a lot of micro grows get it included in, in legalization. Um, and as far as everybody else, I'm pretty sure we're, we're still going to be out here. And uh, we hope to see everybody around, too. Oh, I know a lot of companies are just going to keep going and going and going on, too. Man, you can't stop us at this point. Won't stop us. No, must continue the fight. Uh, well, we've seen such an evolution of extracts over the last few years. I mean, what do you think is going to be the big thing for 2018? Right now? Gonna be strain combinations, the newest strains. Mm -hmm. Somebody's gonna be coming out, you know what I mean? A lot there's I don't I'm not sure exactly what, what's gonna come out, but it's gonna be who's got the craziest, newest strains. A lot of us, I think, are, are running a lot of same strains and you're seeing a lot of things eventually come back around, but mm -hmm. I'm waiting to see something new. Whether uh, it's a flavor or something, I don't know. Oh shit, melty heads in the chat room over on YouTube. What's going on, boss? Um, I, I agree with you. There's a lot of that in that strain common because, again, it's sort of pick and terpene profiles if you want, active, you know, act activating particular receptors <coughs> and shit. Um, I think it's a great, I think it's great. Uh, also for the future, though, I mean, with the evolution of the tech and the science, I mean, can you see, what do you think coming on, like, the horizon down in the future maybe as a next big, big thing? Or could you see something that, that you figure that... There's some kids in the lab that you've seen, hey, that could be kind of cool if you... Like the HCFSC is probably, probably the next coolest thing, the diamond growth. Um, see, see where it goes, really. I, again, I think it's going to come down to the, the, the best tasting. You know what I mean? Well, the newest you, tasting. You said that orange barb is pretty good tasting, so we're going to get some of that over here in the camera. Find a little nice nug oh, throw yeah, in there. The, the chirps on that are crazy. Right. right. All right, well, let me go right ahead. Right there, you got a Tangy Cross Barbara Bud uh, from the house of the Great Gardener. And the the live resin on this is crazy. It's 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 the sep, you'll see on the live resin, there's there's this granular, like kind of the crystals and, and the separation too with the terpenes. Then, uh... All right, cool, man, looking good. Uh, from there, boom, we'll roll that up. <clears throat> Man, smoke some of this over here. I, uh, what else was I going to say? What, uh, oh, yeah, um, <coughs> we'll try all these next ones. Oh, yeah, question then from you. So what's coming next from you guys? Like new products, new drops, anything particular you guys are cooking up? Uh, again, that strain that we were working with, the, the 51st OG, Yeah. Uh, that's going to be really interesting. We got live resin of that coming up. We got some Barbara Bud live resin coming up in a couple weeks. That's going to be just insane. It's going to be insane. Mm -hmm. um, all the products that we've run from the House of the Great Gardener were, were probably some of the best stuff that I've worked with. Uh, in the way of what? Best quality or best yield or best taste? Just or? the chirping profiles on like this orange barb mm. is so tangy dominant in the in the profile it, it's insane and then if you look like it's like little it's pure little stones in there get that under the camera and well you'll be i'm about to right now as so i roll this up i've got it over here man got the orange barb putting it in the in the dab cam here <clears throat> Oh, it is, isn't it? Oh, that's cool. 
Mmm, delicious. Super tasty. Um, <laughs> well, I'll do a dab of that as I roll at this joint. Sorry. <coughs> right. Here, mm -hmm. this will help you. You're all good. Um, well, man, I appreciate it. We got a couple more here left to try. We'll get in this orange barb and stuff. Appreciate you leaving me these shatters and shit like that, man. Lots to go on. Um, I guess it comes down to it. I've really just got uh, four more questions to ask you. Right on, man. Hey, what's going on? All right, the favorite four questions, man. Ask everybody who comes on this show at least once. Uh, how and when did you, Joel from Everlasting Extracts, get into cannabis? Mm, well, how, like I said earlier, when I first got in cannabis, I had a grandmother pass from can uh, cancer. And uh, she had tried using cannabis at the end. And uh, that's when we really when we first kind of got knowledgeable about the, you know, the uses of cannabis and for cancer and that. And um, afterwards, I really started looking into it. Um, and again, that's when I learned about, ex like, learned more about extracts, or I should say, like, other extraction methods, such as, uh, you know, the shatter and live resins and that. Yes. And then uh, pretty much just went from, like, a, a hobby into uh, a career now. <laughs> and uh, we've been you know, going full tilt ever since with it. I, I, I know you've, you, you brought a lovely lady friend with you off camera, but it sounds like you two have had a long relationship with Miss Mary Jane as well. <laughs> I think we're all in love with the same girl. Um, I love it. Uh, your preferred method of consumption, am I gonna go on a limb here and say dabs? Uh, yeah, for sure, definitely it would be, would be dabbing. My man likes the dabbins. Uh, that's cool. Well, on that note, uh, I'm going to take a little dab here of this orange bar <coughs> just because I got to. Oh, it's like, it's, I can't really say it's full on saucy per se, but like it's really soft. It's like not really liquidy, but like it's, man, I like it. Yeah. Very delicious looking. All right. <clears throat> oh, dude. I see what you mean. Yeah, I got it's all it fucking smacks you in the face with the tangy. It's just pure tangy profile on there. It's yeah. crazy. It's and and like okay, the first time I ever tried tangy, I thought it was fake. I didn't even think it was real because it tastes so much like oranges. Yeah, I thought so they I thought they added something to it. I swear, I thought they added it. And then we tried probably about four or five different types of tangy while we were in Barcelona. And the, the flower is crazy. So I was pretty much on a hunt for a tangy a tan <coughs> ever since then, right? And uh, House of the Great Gardener's orange barb was just bang on. <coughs> bang on. <coughs> Woo! <coughs> That's a spicy meatball. <coughs> <coughs> All right, <coughs> question number three. How much do you consume in a day? Are you like an everyday, all day, just a little <laughs> bit along the way? What's your, what's your um, I probably consume, <coughs> I don't know, probably about a gram a day. Of concentrates. Uh, yeah, of concentrates. And uh, could be about 100 milligrams, 200 milligrams of night edibles. Okay. Yeah, a little so bit like of both. And, or something. And maybe. flowers, though, too. Like, the, you know, I probably smoke a joint or two during the day, but probably about a gram. I'd say, most mostly in the morning. Honestly, when I first wake up, um, I'm really sore, so I, I I get a good sesh going on in the morning, and I'm pretty much get my day going after that. Well, late to bed, late to rise. <laughs> we can make maybe when I open my eyes. Uh, if you don't know what that was, go figure it out. Um, fourth question, final question here. Out of all the bags you ever had, <clears throat> you look back in your career and your history with the cannabises. And you say, good Lord, there was this one bag that was so good. Like, I remember so-and-so brought me this bag, or I got it from such-and-such, such, and it stands out as, like, the absolute most memorable fucking bag, strain, whatever, experience. If you can't get it again, we call it the one that got away. But what's your best bag ever? Oh, man, it's probably one of the first strains that I ever blasted into you, Shatter, and that would have been, like, an original sweet Bubba Kush. Hmm. BC-grown Bubba Kush, oh. you know? Just... 
sweet, sweet. I, I've been looking for, I've had a lot of good death babas, a lot of finos out here, but yeah. that sweet, sweet Bubba Kush is probably the, my favorite one. Wow. My all time favorite strain. Love it. <coughs> well, that's the questions, but I got, I guess, just the last is any plug, shout outs, any things we kind of missed along the way? Or? <coughs> Ray now is pretty much shout out to MMJ. You know, they're one of our biggest supporters. Yep. Uh, they're big out here in the cannabis industry. Uh, yep. Locations all across Canada. I just heard today they're going to have more coming out in Alberta, hopefully. So check them out and uh, make sure to follow us and uh, hit us up if you ever want some awesome extracts. Yeah, man. Products from Everlasting Extracts. <laughs> Definitely well put together, man. Super popular amongst the heads, and I see why hitting these, pro hitting these, uh, both these flowers. I see what you mean. Very nice, very nice. It's uh, right. Mm. It's so good, and I appreciate you guys coming through here. I know you don't do a ton of these things on Pot TV or whatever, but uh, make sure you you follow them. Everlasting X, but E V three or lasting, and that's on Instagram as well as on the Facebook. Uh, and of course, MMJ carrying them, uh, uh, <laughs> supporters of our show in a lot of ways. We've gotten products from MMJ a few times on the way. We've had Clint and some others on the show in, in the past, and we'll see him again. I host some events for him. So, awesome. big ups to everybody involved. And well, <coughs> if that's it, then appreciate you being here, man. Awesome, man. Make Thanks sure you, for having me on the show. Hey, man, make sure you get yourself some everlasting extracts as well. I got a little bit more here. I've also got to take a break. Awesome. And Andrew? The award-winning Thompson Caribou. Products dropping every week. Check them out. ThompsonCaribou.com. It's the squaw. We get it. You're busy crafting the finest product this land has to offer. But a fine product means fine packaging. You wouldn't get married in a tracksuit, would you? Whether it's extracts, shatter, butter, CBD oil, edibles, or just cannabis, Jade Maple takes care of your fine product with fine design at a fine price. Check out more fine solutions at jademaple.com. And with that, I'm back. Uh, appreciate uh, the support from folks at Jade Maple, helping make things happen. Also, the Thompson Caribou shouts to the Squid Odd. What's going on? New and exciting things coming from them soon. Make sure you check out the Squadcast. Uh, and of course, as well, too, there's the uh, Join the Squad link over on my website, expertjoints.com and cannabislifenetwork.com, where you can save on your first purchase of TCC. But I know most of you have already made purchases with TCC, but if you haven't, go get some. And if you also want other alternatives, well, go check out Everlasting. Shouts to Joel for being here. Got a run. Gonna go catch the ferry, but uh, we appreciate that. We also appreciate the support of Grassroots Medicinal, uh, Lone Tree Concentrates, Top Leaf Canada, uh, and as well as a Flight, Green Society, and the Squad, aforementioned TCC. Um, <coughs> all they've got websites as well too: GrassMedicinal.ca, Lone Tree Concentrates.ca, Flight.TopLeaf.ca. Uh, flight.life, greensociety.ca, and of course, yes, thompsoncaribou.com. Also, the new Instagram for Team Shatterboo is TCC 2.0, I believe, is the official, or that's one that's starting to be used again, or I don't know, but Team Shatterboo 710 got shut down. So uh, check them out regardless. Support them. And um, yeah, I guess that's it. <clears throat> I just took one, but I should really take another because he left a few more things behind. So with that... I believe it's dab talk. All right, with that, going back to the cam one more again. Hey, there you go. A little bit of shatter for those of you who like the shatters. 
Very nice, very, very nice. In the bud cam over there. No longer in the bud cam, was in the bud, in the was cam. Uh, dab time now, gonna go and hit that. Thanks very much, Everlasting Extracts. Appreciate this, this is the, this is the skunk. The one gram of the skunk shatter uh, over the VCDC, which I'll try next time, but mm. here we go. Dun, 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 dun. Try to have some music. <coughs> we can do better. Oh, <coughs> wait, what? <coughs> oh. Oh my lord. That was intense. <coughs> my eyes are water. <coughs> okay, so if you want to <coughs> be a sloppy mess like me, Woo, man, get some everlasting extracts, boy. <coughs> Visit MMJ <coughs> or hit them up <coughs> online at the Everlasting X on Instagram. <coughs> Good Lord, <coughs> that almost killed me. <coughs> anyway, whoo, Andrew, great. Well, if you like dabs, you might have liked that segment. If you like Tim McBride, you'll like this segment. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa, why is it, why was, why is that all scratchy? That was weird. <clears throat> it was all scratchy there for a minute. Um, strange. I uh, haven't seen him in a few weeks since he was here in Vancouver, all the way from sunny Florida, the one and only pot hauler himself. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the show, our bud, Tim McBride. What's up, brother? What's up? How are you doing, guys? Good, man. You looking shirtless as always? Yeah, you know what? It's, it's, it's kind of weird, man, because uh, we're having, like, the coldest spell we've had in a while. Actually, you guys were warmer than we were yesterday. <laughs> Imagine that shit. <laughs> <laughs> so people are going to blame it on you for bringing it back with you. That's some fucked up climate shit going on, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, really? well. I, 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 it's a bunch of fucked up shit going on, man. Um... Uh, I appreciate you taking the time to visit us, brother. Um, you had a good trip back and stuff, yeah. I, I know. Um, you, uh, you also here, the last trip you were here, um, you were in the middle of finalizing your deal, right? Yeah, actually, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I did a, uh, an e-signing of a, of a contract document for FX uh, and USA Network, and uh, 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 yeah, I had to come home and send the four live ink copies back to them, so uh, yeah, we're off to the races, man. <laughs> Dude, Very that cool. is super cool, man. I uh, can't wait to sort of see it. So, I mean, are you signed and sealed and all but delivered yet? Can we ask that? Signed, or? sealed, and, signed, sealed, and all but delivered, waiting on the, waiting on the, uh, the, the first installment to hit my account, brother. Hey. But uh, yeah, that should be any day now. Uh, did they find someone to play you, and does he look like young you? <laughs> well, there was some talk earlier on when FX first jumped on board about um, there's a guy who's uh, who's in FX who's in FX as an executive. He's also uh, stars in a show called It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. His name's Glenn Howerton. He's uh, he was in the room when the writers pitched my story and. He was the one that uh, um, championed my story to all the rest of the executives and in, in all. And, uh, oh. yeah, so uh, it kind of went from him. And he said, yeah, I got to play this dude. You know, so I'm thinking, I'm talking, you know, send me a picture of who, what this guy looks like. You know, I told my, my manager and my agent, 
I called him. I said, dude, you know, if this is the guy, we're going to have to get him down here for like about three, four months into the gym because <laughs> he ain't going to get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you go feed so him a bunch that, of. Let, let's get that boy in there and get him some of this, you know. <laughs> right? right. That's awesome. Oh, I love it, man. Because, yeah, but, for those who haven't really realized. It's a great ride, man. Tim, Tim's a good sized dude, man. Tim's six what? You're like what? Six three, two thirty, two forty, something like that. I'm six three, two fifteen. Actually, I'm I'm a bit lean right now. I might cut weight. I've yeah. been doing a lot of photo sh photo shit for uh, magazines and whatnot. And uh, yeah, speaking of that, I got one coming out uh, February. Oh bang, man! I love it. I love it. I love it. We well, earlier, have to show us a little bit earlier more. Come issues. back and tell us a bit about that. Uh, but I will also know, man, is, uh, so you guys have any idea when filming might start? Uh, no, that's pretty much up to them, man. You know, you know, once this all fell into their preview as far as production schedules and all that kind of stuff, that, that ball falls in their lap. You know, I'm just, I just make myself available to them whenever need be for, uh, you know, creative consultant, you know, uh, credits that I have every episode then, uh, you know, ends with the role main credits with the, uh, you know, with, uh, Based on a book by, you know, Tim McBride, Saltwater Cowboy, Ride and Fall, Marijuana Empire, blah, 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 all that crap. So, uh, yeah. yeah, it's all cool stuff, man. And uh, But it's been a, a hell of a ride, dude. It's been 10 freaking years. Well, that's what I want to talk to you about, man. I mean, I don't. people are going to hear not only just how wild uh, the rise and fall of a marijuana empire can actually be, but, I mean, it leads me to this tale and sort of tales going forward. Not that we haven't heard all your stories and all your tales, of course, but <coughs> but now that you're going to be extra famous and like on TV sets and shit that you like and going to photo shoots, you're going to have a whole lot of new new stories to tell about new things. Not like again, not they're not interesting right. enough, but we get to follow you kind of on a new chapter going forward and hear some of your new <coughs> tales too, right? Yeah, we're going to see if we can't get. You know, and a lot of this stuff is, of course, you know, uh, closed set stuff and that kind of thing. But, you know, once we get cranking and get going and stuff, you know, I mean, uh, the writers, uh, the, the two main writers of the show and, and my producer actually follow your show, dude. So, um, you know, and they look for me, you know, when I'm on and, and they, you know, they like the content, that sort of thing. So, <coughs> well, yeah. how about this? I'm going to go ahead and I know you'll be back here again soon. And the next time you're up here for an episode if your writers and producers who may very well be watching at the very moment because you're on the show today, um, you guys are welcome to join Tim. We'll bring you all up here. We can talk about our boy and we can celebrate uh, him, inflate his ego a little more, uh, pat him on the back all day, uh, pump him back up to like 2.30 because just some of it will just be like swag. Um, but no, you guys are more than welcome to come join us on the show and, and we can hear all about it. I think it's awesome. Super like proud of you that for doing what you're cool. doing, man. But a decade ago, you decide to tell the story, put pen to paper. So my questions are all I'm going to drop them all at the same time. and You're going to tell us the tale. But did you think you'd end up here? Did you think you'd get here quicker or has it taken longer than you ever thought it would? Did you always intend for it to end up as a TV or show or a movie? Or was that just a pipe dream? Tell it. Tell us about the decade that is the Saltwater Cowboy. <laughs> yeah, you know, back when I started this, <coughs> back this thing, um, you know, I had lost my job as a construction superintendent, um, with a job which I earned, you know, right out of prison. And I, I went from, you know, jumping out of the back of the truck with uh, the rest of the labor class, you know, and uh, eight months later, I'm running the you know, I'm running the crew and, and then I'm uh, uh, the labor foreman and now I'm this construction superintendent and one thing led to another, you know, but um, I had always been, uh, you know, working construction and whatnot, but when the bottom fell out of that in 08, you know, there was nothing left for me to do in construction, that sort of thing. And really only thing I knew up to that point was, you know, stone crabbing and commercial fishing and, you know, now I learned the, the construction industry, which didn't... Uh, you know, which didn't exist any longer. So I sat down in my blissful ignorance. I'm thinking, oh, shit, you know, I'm thinking, you know, every time I ever got around somebody that that knew me would shove their friends over next to me and go, dude, you got to hear some of this crazy shit this guy talks about. Like, you know, so I, you know, I keyed on that and said, you know, everybody wants to hear these crazy stories. Maybe I'll try writing something, you know, I'll try it to write in a book. And I had never wrote a thing in my fucking life, man. You know, I mean, um, up until up until that point, I had just you know been scratching and you know doing minor little bits and pieces here and there. But 
I kind of keyed back a little bit on some uh, one of the guys I knew in prison, David uh, uh, Dennis Lehman. He was a bank robber um, in prison for bank robbery. Of course, obviously, um, was sentenced to sentence for that particular type of crime. That that most amount of time, he's actually in a Guinness Book of World Records. Um, he didn't even rob the bank, man. He was just flying the plane to get the guys the fuck out of there. So. He had a history in uh, cocaine, you know, smuggling this and that, so they couldn't catch him. But when they finally got a bank robbery charge, they nailed his ass to the wall. So um, skipping forward, he had written a book and he was very, you know, he was a published author. So he taught a class in, in while I was in prison and uh, was fictional writing. So what I got out of Dennis, you know, with regards to, you know, where I am now was the the ability to take the sights and the sounds and the tastes and, and – um, put all of that and bring that to life on the page. He taught me how to do that. You know, the tactile sensations and all the, you know, the olfactory sensations and things like that, that, um, that are really important when to get the flavor and into a book. So here I am years later, I'm thinking, damn, you know, the market's crashing. I got no job. I got two kids and fucking my shit's falling apart. I think I'll write a book and, and, you know, make a million bucks <laughs> and my blissful ignorance. Here I am writing this goddamn book, you know, and then one thing leads to another and I feel I figure out what self publishing is all about. That's a crack of shit. And, uh, publishing itself, trying to get a literary agent and go through everything and do it that way. It was a, a daunting task, you know, to say the least, but you know, I'd muddled through it, made my way through it. One thing led to another and the, you know, the story really spoke for itself along the way. Um, which I have, which I'm very thankful for, and the ability to to tell the story uh, uh, the way in which I did, I did. I was very blessed to be able to do that, and uh, um, just managed pulling it together and putting it together and stringing together, you know, eighty six thousand words into a, you know, a very cool story. It would seem that uh, people are kind of climbing onto man, which is very cool. <laughs> To see it evolve over all this time and, and turn into something which I had no idea, you know, like when I started out doing this, I had no idea I would run into guys like you and, you know, and my, you know, my story would get picked up and thrown all over the freaking place, you know, and then Vice comes out of the, the you know, out of the nowhere at me and, you know, and, and granted, you know, keep in mind, this is 10 years worth of fucking around with this shit, man. This doesn't happen overnight. It takes a lot of uh, tenacity to, you know, to, and to stick through people telling you, oh, fuck, you know, it's a pipe dream. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I give up a lot of things in my life, a lot of friends. I lost a lot of friends that just left me go because they're thinking, oh, he's right. But, yeah, right. Well, here I am 10 years later. I'm not. I'm on this wild-ass ride, and I'm by myself because everybody else ditched me, you know? Fuck you. <laughs> I'm going to prove you wrong. How many times in my life do I need to prove you wrong? You know, that kind of shit. So here I am with and, uh, you know, I've got a lot of uh, friends to thank for it, you know, especially every, all my buddies there at uh, um, CLN, man, and Pot TV and all the friends that I've made up there and, you know, got tuned into Vice and my video now on Vice is uh, probably going around near somewhere 10 million tonight views. Um, yeah, so it's uh, very been a very cool ride, man. And I got to I got to give props to my to my boy, the X man and everybody there behind the scenes. Hey, man, we appreciate the opportunity to work with you, man. And, I mean, if you guys want to hear more about how it all went down, make sure you read Saltwater Cowboy, The Rise and Fall of a Marijuana Empire by our bud Tim McBride. It's where it's all started, and it's also the start of a whole bunch more to come. Timmy, I do know that going forward you're going to be a little busier, and uh, we, we might not be able to catch up with you every couple of weeks, and we might have to, like... Uh, uh, see you a little bit less or a little bit more infrequently or, or out of schedule, but it's all good. Right. We're just happy to follow along with you. Yeah, you know, you. unfortunately, that's an, that's an inevitable byproduct of what it is we get get ourselves into when we get into this industry, right? You know, but um, I'm not going away, man, by any stretch of the imagination. I'll always check in and chime in. I can always Skype from set, you know, or wherever I am, you know, in the, in the States when I'm traveling and all, you know, dude, here I am. We're, yeah, that's the cool thing about it, too. We're going to get some news stories, and we're going to be able to get you in some cool places. And as you follow around, and even if you're just in your hotel room in L.A., just, you know, so how was the day? What's right. going on? Checking. And there's going to be some new tales to be told, as well as I still want to tell a few of the old ones. I'm still dying to get John on the show and some shit like that. So I think we still yeah. have many, many more things to talk about. But it's just going to sort of, we can talk about some new shit, man. The tale of Tim continues. Let's yeah. just put it that way. Yeah, we'll get. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll make all that happen. We'll pull all it together. We'll get John on here, and 
you know, like I said, yeah, when I get to LA and, and I'm moving around and out and about and shit, you know, and you know, the kind of people that I'll be running into, I'll see who wants to jump in and you know, that kind of thing. So, you know, stay tuned, stay peeled. Some cool shit coming, man. If you want to stay tuned, make sure you keep alert with what's going on through Pot Holler Tim on Instagram, an original saltwater cowboy on uh, oh sorry, Pot Holler Tim on Twitter, original saltwater cowboy on Instagram. Right. Get yourself a copy of Saltwater Cowboy, The Rise and Fall of a Marijuana Empire by our bud Tim McBride. From Look, you can get it from Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Indigo, Audible.com, wherever better books are sold. Even for me, I think i got like 30 autographed first editions left. That's it. Uh, yeah. Run out and get uh, it. Run out and get a first edition because uh, the first editions are not imprinting no longer. So once this thing, you know, blows up and, and you know, gets its new life, man, uh, second they'll, they'll run second editions, you know. So these are going to be rare copies. <laughs> Always a pleasure, my man. We will see you again soon or soon-ish. The one and only Tim McBride, ladies and gentlemen. Peace, guys. Love you, man. You too, brother. Thank you. Uh, I know you guys love him. Uh, do you know that? But, but, but did you know... Did you know, random trivia, odd facts, useless information, some of it you might know, some of it you might not know, but uh, did you know the first recorded use of cannabis as a medicinal drug occurred in 2737 BC by Chinese Emperor Shen Yung? The emperor documented the drug's effectiveness in treating the pains of rheumatism and gout. And we've been at it ever since. It's like 4,700 plus years. It's pretty close to everlasting. Uh, and I don't really see us stopping using cannabis anytime soon. So uh, I guess if you didn't know, now you do. Close, anyway. Um, anyway, figure you might appreciate knowing a little something you didn't know. Is what it is. Uh, that's the segment. But we would appreciate if you'd check out grassrootsmedicinal.ca. LoneTreatsConcentrates.ca, TopLeaf.ca, Flight.life, uh, GreenSociety.ca, and uh, ThompsonCaribou.com. Shouts to the Squidod. They're all helping make Studio 710 and Expert Joints Live happen in their own respect. So thank you very much. Hats off to them. And you know what else comes next for those of you who watch the commercials? That's right, the commercials. Andrew. British Columbia, home to the most beautiful landscapes in the world. Home to mom and pop vineyards, hot springs, farmers markets, some of the world's best skiing, snowboarding, surfing, and mountain biking. We protect our rainforests and keep our air clean. In BC, we strike the right balance between nature and nurture. But did you know that for the last 30 years, BC has also been home to the finest cannabis in the world? BC Bud is world renowned for its taste, aroma, and potency. We've competed and won cups, gained recognition from international celebrities. We are the cannabis growers of Canada. We create wealth, opportunity, and good paying private sector jobs. The BC cannabis crop is worth over $7 billion a year, and there were over 17,000 farms creating work for Canadians and improving the lives of millions of people. We are joining together to build a free and fair cannabis market that benefits all Canadians. Won't you come and join us at cannagrowers.ca? week, Thailand is poised to legalize medicinal cannabis. Kind of cool if you're in Thailand. 
The Narcotics Control Board of Thailand is pushing forward with a rewritten draft of the country's drug laws in order to legalize medicinal marijuana. The proposed revision, which is currently going through the parliamentary process, will allow medicinal cannabis to be sold over the counter for patients with a valid prescription from the doctor. Currently on its way to the cabinet for consideration will be ultimately voted on by the appointed interim parliament. The move expect is expected to pass without opposition. So legalizing medical cannabis on its way to Thailand. That's kind of cool. Uh, also kind of cool, we'll see if it actually goes anywhere, but the House Democrats in the U.S. introduced a bill to legalize marijuana and provide restorative justice to communities impacted by the war on drugs. That's, the part, that's Democratic rep Barbara Lee of California. She's the big picture, so I figured I'd just shout her out. What's up, Barbara? I like the one angler. Uh, very nice sweater you have on there. She looks like she was telling somebody some truth. Uh, anyway, the, uh, basically the House Democrats introduced a bill to legalize cannabis at the federal level. The bill lays a groundwork for what is uh, one of the sponsors described as an inclusive cannabis industry by expunging federal convictions and establishing a community and reinvestment fund to help former convicts enter the legal industry. The bill is also a companion set to introduce into the Senate from last year. But anyway, the point is, is 12 House Democrats in companion to a Senator uh, Cory Booker's Marijuana Justice Act they can uh, sponsor this companion. And beyond removing marijuana from the Cannabis Con uh, Controlled Substances Act list, the bill proposes going a step further by reporting restorative justice to communities disproportionately affected by cannabis arrests and convictions and create an inclusive industry from the ground up. It is a bold proposal. Anyway, they go on talking about a $500 million community investment fund, focus on job training, uh, cut, federal f cut federal funding for law enforcement and prison construction in states, and uh, uh, contribute to reinvestment funds. So, we'll see. Also, the next story you see there, Governor Cuomo, Andrew Cuomo from New York, wants to fund a study of the possible impact of legalizing recreational cannabis in the state. Of De uh, in the state. Democratic governor said at his annual budget address in Albany on Tuesday afternoon. He also introduced several other proposals, including a possible surtax on pharmaceutical company sales of opioid medication and a tax on companies that sell over the Internet. He's pointing to the truth. But anyway, New York, big state. And uh, I kind of think as much as it's cool that they'll look to legalize it and do a study on it, yeah, whatever, but they're preparing a tax on companies that sell more than $100 million annually on, on uh, opioids. So it helps like a surcharge. So that was actually what caught my eye in that story. But anyway, it was what it was. Um, Kentucky governor has introduced a recreational marijuana legalization bill. So Kentucky has uh, aimed at legalizing cannabis. So they're looking to, uh, they said, join the legalization trend flourishing elsewhere. This bill would allow 21 and older to use cannabis, also legalize product, production of sale and uh, of the old cannabises. So Kentucky, we've got pending, pending legalization potentially. They just keep piling on, um, which is kind of cool because as, uh, according to the Independent here, marijuana legalization causes, causing violent crime to fall in state study fines. Rates of assault and murder are decreasing in regions near Mexican border where cannabis use has been partially legalized. So it's like a little bit, I don't know, regional specific and whatever, but uh, anyway, the legalization of cannabis for, for medical purposes has led to a significant reduction in violent crime in several U.S. states bordering Mexico. Uh, the pub study found that in the Economic Journal, uh, the rate of crimes between robberies, murders, and aggravated assault fell by 12.5%, which is an eighth, which is not bad, uh, in counties close to the border after the introduction of medical marijuana laws. So uh, continue to do that, and we'll see crime rates drop. Cool. Uh, PEI government, Prince Edward Island here, bring it closer to home, although it's the complete opposite side of the country. The only way I could get further away is if I was over in Victoria or Tofino. Um, PEI government announces its retail model and rules for recreational cannabis. We've all seen all the states, all the states, all the provinces come out with their own different uh, plans on what they're going to do with it. But the government of Prince Edward Island says it will operate four government-owned retail locations for recreational cannabis and allow online orders for home delivery. Charlottetown, Summerside, Montague, and West Prince will each get a store. Now, Prince Edward Island is not very big, but still only four stores, one in each town, only four towns on the island is not a lot. 
Uh, and at a minimum age of 19, and adults will be allowed to publicly possess our 30 grams of lawful dried cannabis. So, but <clears throat> all of which will be supplied by uh, Cannabis Garden of Charlotte, Charlottetown or Grand Grand of New Brunswick and Canopy Growth of Smith Falls, Ontario. So all three supplied by three L, or all four supplied by three LPs. Shocking. Uh, Georgia Strait, though, this is kind of something I didn't see. Well, I did talk to um, Amanda the other day, and it sort of sounded like she had something on the go. This must have, could have very well been it. Georgia Strait presents Grassroots, an inaugural event for Cannabis Curious in Vancouver. Uh, the consumer-focused Cannabis Conference will bring world-class educators and exhibitors to UBC Robson Square. With just a few, legalization just a few months away, we know that residents of Vancouver, the Lower Mainland, and beyond have questions about cannabis and its potential. While recognizing this, the Georgia Strait will host Grassroots, an expo for the Cannabis Curious at UBC Robson Square the weekend of April 7th and 8th. The long weekend conference will feature exhibitor booths, a lounge area, and a stage for speakers and panels that will discuss topics like women's health, identifying quality, cooking with cannabis, treating pain, and cannabis for seniors, among others. So, uh, who's going to be there? Uh, Zachariah Walsh, Mary Jean Watermelon Dunstan, Jamie Shaw, Travis Lane, uh, with an unparalleled industry experience across the board. Hopefully we get Amanda to be able to talk to us in here more about it, see if that goes. Otherwise, that is the news. As far as updates, <coughs> there's a couple things to tell you about. <coughs> and yes, there's always more news you can talk about. You can go on about it forever and forever, but can't go on forever. It's not the everlasting episode. Oh, wait. Uh, on Sunday, we released new articles from James and Ashley Priest of Canalance. Uh, no Time to Wait and How Do You Like It? How do you like it? Uh, anyway, we do like it if you would support our expert contributors, James and Ashley, by visiting them at canna-lance.com and supporting at Canalance on social media. And, and our bud Crazy Dago is coming back to start a season three, one of my favorite shows uh, Crazy Dago's The Grow Tube Show makes its return tomorrow night, season three, seven o'clock Pacific time on Crazy Dago's YouTube channel. Killer feature, great lineup of guests coming up. Uh, season three is looking really, really good. There's a list of a bunch of people on there, man. Vader OG, Vader OG Grow Mouse, Med Grower for Growly, Pedro and Dizzy, Subcool, Wookie Kush, Brown Guy 420, Justin, Just in Time to Grow, Loki Grower, Med Cropper, Mendo Dope. JJ Kitchen, and many more. My name's not on that list, but you know I'll appear on that panel at some point. As it was uh, astutely pointed out, I am not a grower. But you'll still see me there at some point. Uh, I did, I just don't. I'm too busy. Uh, besides, I can get really good weed as much as I need, so just leave it to people who've got the time to do it better. Like some of the stream nerds, so I appreciate that. Shouts to Dago, absolutely one of my favorite shows. Uh, check him out, welcome back. Also next week on the show, wow, we're really chewing through this, man. This is gonna be one of the shortest shows ever. The Everlasting episode will be a contradiction. Be one of the shorter episodes. Not bad, I like it. Uh, anyway, next week on the show, episode 120, will be the creators of the strain formerly known as Gorilla Glue. We'll have Josie Wales, Lone Waddy, and I believe uh, Cat7 as well, too, from GG Strains. So that should be interesting. Hey, Father Mike, what's going on, man? Shouts to Father Mike. Yeah, man, check him out, Father Mike and Ruby Doobie. They got their wake-up show in the morning there as well, too, if you will. Good morning, folks. How are you? Give him the plug in there, Mike. Um, I do appreciate you guys doing what you're doing. I can't wait to wake up. When I was thinking about it. Actually, today when I was getting ready... I thought what I should do is set my alarm, wake up, tune in the show, and just do the show from in bed. Because it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll probably just go to bed like two hours before that. That's another time we'll talk about that. Anyway, so that will be a, a show next week. As well as uh, we're going to have some products and people from the RPM Farms. So that'll be good. Some fucking dank dank going to be in the house. Mm. Speaking of dank, Al the Alchemist is going to be in the place to be as well too. we got much to talk about with that man. 
I tell you what. Uh, make sure you toke up and tune in. It's going to be dope. Also, make sure you watch all the pod TV shows, including Cannabis Culture News with Jeremiah Vanderpeer and Johnny B. Uh, uh, the story is Freddie Pritchard will even be on the show tomorrow. So shouts to Freddie. I know he's got beef with me these days, but... Um, I'd love to air it and I'd love to work it out and move forward. I hope what he's coming back is, is to tell that he's coming back to the show or something. That'd be fucking awesome. I don't know, but make sure you toke up and tune in for that tomorrow. That'll be well worth watching. Also, High Noon with Alyssa Miles and Homies on Saturdays. We'll check them out from the Cannabis Culture Lounge. Also, the Royal Hour with Ms. Kush Queen on Sundays from Butter King's Place. The 420 Lifestyle with Carly Marley and BC Bud Gal will be back Monday, uh, the 5th of February. Make sure you check that out. Uh, and from Under the Influence with Greg Marijuana Man Williams, Kush Queen will be also in between a lot of times, Al the Alchemist as well. Uh, much to see on the Wednesday show, one of my favorite shows on POT TV as well. I love it. I appreciate it. I thank you all for being here. I thank Joel for being here earlier. Uh, we appreciate him and the goodies. Also, Tim McBride for the latest of the Tim's Tales. It was a good one. Looking forward to following along that dude and watching his success. If you haven't seen it, check out that Vice video. It's actually pretty good. Or just go back and watch every episode that he's been on. You'll get the same story. But uh, Thanks for watching, and thanks to all of you in the chat. 420 Wild Dragon, what's going on, man? Cannabis Love, Med THC Ontario, Roly, yes, Vada Mike, there to be there. Uh, East Coast Soilless, how are you? Wanderer, Two Joints, Professor Weed, uh, Anthro Grows, all sorts of people in the YouTube chat, man. Lots of people being here. Appreciate you giving more thumbs up. I was always appreciated. And you guys are over there. I see Frank Miles killing in the chat room. Timothy Ward over there on Facebook. Everyone watching. Appreciate your continued support, man. It takes a lot to make this happen. And I couldn't do it without my man Andrew and the folks from Cannabis Life Network. Yes, we need all the help we can get around here. I'm very demanding, you know. No, just I can't click all the buttons from Andrew's desk. My arms aren't that long enough. Uh, but it's all good. We will see you next week for episode 120. Yeah, if I do see that, thank you very much for token up, tuning in. Yeah, one, twice, yeah, yeah, then shit. Nice little short show. With that, Andrew, hit the music.